Hey guys, it's Rick here. I've been asked a lot online and in real life if I would be interested in narrating audiobooks. I've never thought that I've had the voice and or inflection required to become a voiceover, but I am an avid audiobook listener. I work a pretty manual and repetitive job, and I'm able to listen to audiobooks whenever I want to, really. But I'd be a liar if I said the idea never crossed my mind. This reading here is more of just like a test sample than anything else. I have to say, of anything, I think my pacing is a little off, I think I read a bit too fast, and I might slur my words a little too much. If you guys think that I should pursue this line of work, it's not really work, it's more intrigue than anything else, I would appreciate some constructive criticism on this reel. I decided to read a small portion of the beginning from a roadside picnic figuring it aligns well with both mine and your guys' interest. And if all goes well, I need to practice anyways, so I'll probably finish the entire book, releasing it in small chapters, and then finally compiling it into one large sample. But that's enough of me of rambling. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys later. A Roadside Picnic by Arkady and Boris Strugatsky translated by Antonia W. Boyce, from an interview by a special correspondent from the Harmount Radio with Dr. Valentin Pillman, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physics for 19... I suppose that your first serious discovery, Dr. Pillman, should be considered what is now called the Pillman Radiant. I don't think so. The Pillman Radiant wasn't the first, nor was it that serious, nor was it really a discovery. And it wasn't completely my own, either. But surely you are choking, Doctor. The Pillman Radiant is a concept known to every school child. That doesn't surprise me. According to some sources, the Pillman Radiant was discovered by a schoolboy. Unfortunately, though, I don't remember his name. You can look it up in the Stetson's History of Visitation. It's described in full there. His version is that the Radiant was discovered by a schoolboy, that a college student published the coordinates, but for some unknown reason was named after me. Yes, well, many amazing things can happen with a discovery. But would you mind explaining it to our listeners, Dr. Pillman? Well, the Pillman Radiant is simplicity itself. Imagine that you were spinning a huge globe, and you started firing bullets into it. The bullet holes would lie on the surface in a smooth curve. The whole point of what you may call my first serious discovery lies in the simple fact that all six visitation zones are situated on the surface of our planet. It's as if someone had taken six shots at Earth from a pistol located somewhere near the Earth's Deneb line, Deneb being the Alpha Star in Cygnus. The point in the heavens from which, so to speak, the shots came from is the Pillman Radiant. Thank you, Doctor. My fellow Harmonites, we have finally heard a clear explanation of the Pillman Radiant. By the way, the day before yesterday was the 13th anniversary of the visitations. Dr. Pillman, do you care to say a few words to your fellow townsmen on the subject? What in particular interests you? Remember, I wasn't in Harmount at the time. That makes it even more interesting. We want to hear what it is you felt when you heard that your hometown had become the site of an invasion from a super-civilization from space. Well, to tell you the truth, I first thought it was a hoax. It was hard to imagine that anything like that could happen to my hometown. Gobi or Newfoundland seemed more likely than Harmount. But nevertheless, Doctor, you finally had to believe it at some point. Finally... Yes. And then, well, after some time, it occurred to me that Harmount and the other five visitation zones, oh, sorry, my mistake, there were only four other sites known at the time, that all of them had aligned on a very smooth curve. I had calculated these coordinates and had sent them to nature. And you weren't at all concerned with the fate of your hometown? Not really, no. You see, by then I had come to believe in the visitation zones. But I simply couldn't force myself to believe in the hysterical reports about burning neighborhoods and monsters that selectively devoured only old men and children, or about the battles between the invulnerable invaders and the highly vulnerable yet steadfast royal tank guards. You are right, Doctor. I remember that our reporters really botched a story in that area, 
But now let us return to science. The discovery of the Pillman Radiant was the first, but probably not the last, of your contributions to the knowledge of the Visitation Zones. The first... and last. But surely you've been carefully following the international research in the Visitation Zones. Yes. Once in a while I read the reports. And just so we're clear, Doctor, you mean the reports on the International Institute of Extraterrestrial Cultures, correct? Yes. Then if I may ask, Doctor, what in your opinion has been the most important discovery in the past 30 years? The discovery of the visitation zones themselves. I beg your pardon, Doctor? The fact is, the visitation zones themselves is the most important discovery not only of the past 30 years, but the entire history of mankind. It's not so important to know just who these visitors were, and it's not so important to know where they came from, why they came, or why they spent so little time here. The most important thing is that humanity knows now for sure we are not alone in this universe, and I fear that the Institute of Extraterrestrial Cultures will never be fortunate enough to make a more fundamental discovery.